Hello everybody, welcome back to the Farming Simulator 25 Tips and Tricks video. Today we're going to be chasing the ever elusive 100% yield bonus. What does it take to get that? And is it worth it? So we're here on our starting farm and I am on field four. Field four needs lime, needs plowing, there are weeds growing, and we have, well, we've harvested a wheat field. So we have stubble after we've harvested wheat. And the hunt for the elusive 100% yield bonus doesn't begin in the spring. It begins immediately following harvest the previous year. Because the first thing we need to do is we need to mulch this field. What do we need to do in order to mulch a field? Well, we need to get a mulcher, no doubt. We're going to find those here under vehicles and soil cultivation. We're going to pick up a mulcher real fast. I like this Bednar Mulcher MM7000 butterfly mulcher myself. So that is what we're going to go ahead and make use of. So let me go ahead and get this field mulched. And we'll be back talking about the next steps. Now, a few little tidbits about mulching. Mulching is going to give us 2.5% yield bonus. That's it. So, again, when I said at the start of the video, is it worth the 100% yield bonus? This is a step that, honestly, depending on the size of your field and the size of the mulchers available to you, you may choose to skip because it's just 2.5%. And you're not necessarily going to mulch on every crop. So, let's take a look here. At our crop types we're going to mulch when the crop is going to leave us with stubble so you're going to get stubble from wheat barley canola oat corn sunflowers and soybeans all of those crops will leave stubble after you harvest potatoes no sugar beet no you're digging those up out of the ground there's there's nothing left once you harvest to to stubble to, to mulch so potatoes sugar beet no red beets carrots parsnips no oilseed radish no the whole purpose behind oilseed radish is you plow it under so you wouldn't mulch oilseed radish rice and long grain rice yes you can mulch those too Sugarcane, I would avoid mulching because it's a regrow crop. And I wouldn't want to affect regrowth as a result of the mulching process. Plus, it's only 2.5%. Cotton and sorghum, yes, you're going to mulch those. Grapes and olives, you don't necessarily mulch grapes and olives. You mulch between them. And the process is completely different with completely different machinery. We're going to cover those when we get to the specific grapes and olives videos as far as mulching with that. Poplar is another one of those regrow crops. Don't mulch poplar. Green bees, yes. Peas, yes. Spinach, only mulch after the second harvest. If you do it right and you plant spinach early on in the year, you'll get two harvests out of it. Don't march, mulch after the first harvest because you can't affect the regrowth of it for the second harvest. So only mulch spinach after the second harvest. So that said, once your mulching is complete, well, we're ready to move on to the next process, which for this field is going to be plowing because we are in a need plow state. Not every field will necessarily be in a need plow state after every harvest. So most crops do not require plowing. Some crops will require plowing after every harvest. So let's run back down through this list. Wheat, barley, canola, oat. Nope, you don't have to plow after those crops. Now the fields, for example, our fields here, well, they're all showing that they need plowing. And that's because, well, this is a brand new save game. And on brand new save games, fields may have different states to them than you may normally have with respect to harvest. But 
in general, wheat, barley, canola, and oat do not require plowing after harvest. Corn, on the other hand, yes, it does. Sunflowers, pretty sure it does. Soybeans, no, you don't have to plow after every harvest. Potatoes and sugar beet, yes, you have to plow after every harvest if you want to get the plowing bonus. The plowing bonus is pretty nice at 15%. Rice and long grain rice, no, you do not have to plow after each harvest. Sugarcane, definitely don't plow after each harvest or you're not going to get any more sugarcane regrowth. Remember, sugarcane regrows. Do not plow after harvest with sugarcane or you are done. You're not going to see sugarcane regrow. Cotton, sorghum, no, you do not have to plow after harvest. Grapes and olives, no, you do not plow after each harvest. Poplar, just like sugarcane, do not under any circumstances plow after a poplar harvest unless you are completely done with poplar and you never want to see it again because poplar will just forever regrow. It's like a grass. Red beets, carrots, and parsnips, yes, you must plow after every harvest. Green beans, peas, spinach, grass, no, do not plow after harvest. Especially with spinach, do not plow after the first harvest, or you won't have a second harvest. And grass, if you plow it up, well, you're done. And now you got to put grass either back down or some other crop. And yes, you always plow after red seed, oil seed radish planting, because that's the only reason you plant it, is to plow it into the ground. And as a result, you get a fertilization state. So let's come over here and talk about our plows. Well, we have several different types of plows, if you will. We have our traditional plows, our mold board plows, okay? These are gonna produce small stones when you plow. They're also gonna have the added benefit of not allowing weeds to grow. So the act of plowing in a case where you need to also prevents weeds from growing, which somewhat prevents your need to weed. That itself has a bonus. We also have spaders. Now spaders are interesting. They also produce small stones when used. They also do not allow weeds to grow. And then we have subsoilers. Subsoilers dig deep into the ground, deeper than plows. And as a result, the stones that come up are larger. In addition, while they do dig deep into the ground, they don't have the benefit of not causing weeds to grow. So you will have to weed a field after you use a subsoiler. So it's kind of an interesting little trade-off there. In addition, subsoilers do not apply, allow the creation of fields, whereas spaders and plows do allow the process of field creation. We're just going to use a standard plow. And for that, we're going to pick the Servo T6000P. So a step that's not necessarily required for optimal yield, but highly recommended with respect to minimizing wear and tear on your vehicles and implements, at this state, since we have plowed the ground, would be to collect the stones. So we can see here, Little clumps of stones have spawned throughout the field. And with respect to small stones, we could just roll the field with a roller. That will push the stones back down into the ground. Or for larger stones or even smaller stones, we could use a stone collector to pick them up. Now again, the stone collector is not necessarily a requirement for optimal yield, but more or less something that you would do in order to make sure that you have optimal wear and tear on your machinery by reducing that wear and tear by collecting the stones. So I'm just going to hire a helper here to go off and collect said stones. And I'll show you in the shop then where we can find our stone picker. So we're going to find our stone picker under our vehicles. 
And then we have the category of soil cultivation, stone pickers. Within the base game, there's just one stone picker. Of course, at some point, there will likely be mods that you can add to this listing. But we have the Scorpio 550, and this thing is going to require 120 horsepower to operate. And it's going to hold 2,000 liters worth of stones. Now, something else that is not really a part of the optimal yield video. But what we do with these stones is we can take these stones over to our cement factory, which is located right here, and sell those stones at the cement factory. Or if we own the cement factory, well, we can then place them in there in order to make various products that the cement factory makes, like our cement brick, cement bags, and roof plate. The act of stone collecting actually also cultivates the field. So we now have a cultivation state. And theoretically, we probably should have, if we were doing things correctly, as far as with real farming techniques, put lime on the field before we plow. That way, the act of plowing worked the lime into the soil. You don't necessarily have to do things in any real particular order in farm sim up to the point that you seed once you seed then there's certain things you really shouldn't do after the fact like definitely don't plow after you seed but so here it's not going to cause us any great grief if we put lime on the field now and the act of liming the field itself is going to give us a nice little bonus of an additional 15%. So while we don't see in the information down at the bottom any sort of yield improvement yet, we have mulched 2.5% and we have limed, will be liming, 15%, and we've plowed 15%. So we have, in essence, given ourselves by doing these steps to this point a 32.5% yield bonus. Now, as of the base game, there's simply just one thing, one implement that will allow us to put lime on the ground that we're going to find here under yield improvements, fertilized spreaders, the Breedall K105. That is the only one of these that is going to support both solid fertilizer and lime. You see all these other three, they just list solid fertilizer. As we, once again, just hire a helper to do our lime spreading, let's talk a little bit about where do we get lime. Well, here on Riverbend Springs, we can get lime from various hot spots. So scattered around the map are various hot spots that look like this. This will provide us not only lime, but will also provide us solid fertilizer. So we can get both lime and solid fertilizer out of these hotspots or lime stations. We can also get lime from our vehicle shop. So if we come in here into our shop under consumables, we have our solid fertilizer in big bag pallet format, big bag format, or a IBC tote format with respect to liquid fertilizer. We can get our lime in the same pallet big bag format or big bag format. So we can either get pallets or big bags of lime and solid fertilizer, or we could buy those in bulk at the various lime stations here on Riverbend Springs, Hutan Pantai, or Zilonka as far as the three base maps. And if you're playing on a mod map, then it's kind of up into the air as to if the map author had put in bulk purchase stations or not. At this point, we've now done enough field prep work with respect to our optimal yield, achieving 100% bonus, to put seed in the ground. So we have planted, or sorry, we have plowed, we've mulched, we've limed, we also collected stones, which wasn't necessarily required for the optimal yield. 
But where are we at now? So right now we're putting wheat in the ground. And we are at plus 52% yield bonus. Interesting that we are at plus 52%. From what I've already said already, why do you think we're at plus 52%? Well, it's because we've plowed. The act of plowing gives you a 15% bonus. But also the act of plowing guarantees we won't have weeds. So plowing in essence is technically a 35% bonus because weeding alone is 20%. So if plowing is the equivalent of weeding for the purpose of your first harvest, that's where the extra 20% is coming from. Remember, we had mulching, 2.5%. That was the first thing we did. Then we plowed. So we're at 17.5%. Then we provided lime to our field. We're at 32.5%. Now we are planting, putting seed in the ground, and we're now seeing our yield bonus is at 52%. We have a rogue 20% here somewhere, and that 20% is with respect to weeding. If we didn't have to plow this ground, okay, we would automatically have 15% yield bonus because plowing wasn't required. If we come here and disable plowing, periodic plowing required, if we turn it off, that's basically plus 15 to everything guaranteed. We're not losing 15% because we disabled plowing, so therefore we can't plow, we can't get the bonus. That's not how it works. We get the bonus because plowing is no longer a required step. We could also turn off stones. We could also turn off lime and weeds if we wanted. So if we turn off weeds, 20% plus, we turn off lime, 15% plus, and we turn off plowing, another 15% plus. We're, we're automatically plus 50%. I'll leave that up to you if you want to do that or not. The game allows it, and as such, the game will adjust how the yield bonus is applied in order to still allow you to obtain that plus 100%. For the purpose of this video, though, we're just going to go ahead and march through the steps. After we finish planting our crop, we're going to fertilize it. How do you know when to plant your crop? And this so much isn't necessarily a part of this video, but there is a crop counter. And if you play with crop growth enabled, well, you're going to need to abide by this crop counter. So you can see a planting season and a harvest season. So we have to wait until September to put wheat in the ground. And that's exactly what we're doing. We're putting wheat in the ground at this point and we'll be able to harvest wheat come next July. So we have between September and July to perform the following tasks. We need to fertilize twice. We need to roll our crop and we need to weed if we didn't plow, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and let this finish out. And then we'll talk about, well, do we want to fertilize first or roll? So for the next step, I'm just gonna go ahead and put our first fertilization state down and we should see our yield bonus have a pretty nice little jump. Now we are instantly up to 75% with our fertilization state of 50%. That is because with the base game, we need to basically provide two fertilization levels. Let's turn off our need rolling. We'll turn off our mulch state. That way our fertilized state will appear here and we are showing our first fertilization state. We need to 
wait for a growth state before we can apply a second fertilization state. So what we're going to do after this is we're going to roll and we should see our plus 75 jump to plus 77 or 78. Because remember, rolling gives us plus two and a half percent. Mulching gives us plus two and a half percent. So combine those two, we're going to give us a five percent bonus. And we don't see the rounding of really 75 and a half percent here. So let's go ahead and just finish out our fertilization. And then we will talk about our rollers while we're waiting. So once again, under vehicles and yield improvement, we have our rollers category. And for every crop other than grass, you're going to want to use these rollers. Well, also other than your row crops, you're not going to want to use rollers on row crops per se, because it's going to get rid of the ridges. So when I say row crops, what am I talking about? I'm talking about your potatoes. I'm talking about your red beets, carrots, and parsnips. You're not going to necessarily want to roll those crops. So back here under rollers, we have the Rexus 1230 and the Land Roller 591A. This Land Roller is pretty huge, 27.7 meters. So obviously this is probably going to fit most needs until you get into those super big fields. I guess one added perk with doing rolling after fertilization is that the act of rolling, well, eliminates the ground deformation that has happened as a result of the fertilization. And therefore you kind of helps you see where you have and have not rolled the field. If we jump out, remember we are at plus 75% pre-roll and post-roll, we're at plus 77%. So really, the only step that is left, since we don't have to weed now because we plowed, is going to be the second fertilization. And that should kick us all the way up to 100%. And we're going to know that after the next row state. So let me go ahead and finish rolling this out. I'll advance into the next month. And we should see growth on our field here. We should be able to apply our second fertilization state and see ultimately where we stand with respect to our yield. So it is now October and we have our first growth on our wheat. And it is at this state where we would take a look and see about weeds. But since we plowed, again, we don't need to weed, but had we not plowed, either because we had plowing turning off or plowing wasn't required for this field, then we would need to weed. And weeds can be three different heights or three different row states of weeds. We can have small weeds. And typically with small weeds, we would use a weeder like this Puler 600. Okay, it's basically a drag line or some tines that drag through the field. And in theory, your crop would have better roots than your weeds. And this would basically drag the weeds up out of the ground. Medium growth weeds. We need to expand our operation a bit and we need to move into a hoe and medium weeds are going to require something like this Rotocare V12400. This would be a hoe and it would have tines or something else that would kind of dig in there and help pull out the medium size weeds. Now we can figure out what we can do with our weeds down here if we take a look at the description. So this is going to be to pull out small weeds. You see this one's changed to small and medium weeds. Small weeds. Then this is gonna be small weeds. And then our, we also have small weeds here. So all of these are gonna be for small weeds except our pottinger. 
Now for large weeds, weeds that we really waited too long to get to. At that point, there's only one option, and that is to spray with herbicide, liquid herbicide. That'll kill any and all weeds. That'll kill small, medium, and large weeds. But herbicide is expensive. One, because you need a sprayer. There's only two reasons to spray, liquid fertilizer or herbicide. Liquid fertilizer is expensive. Herbicide is expensive. So in essence, a sprayer is an expensive need because you have to supply it with expensive consumables, probably to get rid of something that you could have done earlier for far cheaper. Your liquid fertilizer is going to be available in totes, and your herbicide is also going to be available in totes. So since we don't have to weed, then we're done that step. But this is when you would come in here and you would look at the information in the lower right corner, and it would say, need weeding. And it might say, you know, medium-sized weeds. It might say small weeds. It might say large weeds. Walk around a little bit. Check out your field. You might have a mixture of medium and small weeds. Typically, if you have just one day months, well, you may not be able to catch small weeds before they progress into a mixture of small to medium-sized weeds. If you have crop destruction turned on, then your tire choice is going to start to really matter. For us right now, it's not going to matter so much because we are still in the first growth state of our crop. And our crop is very resilient with respect to its first growth state. So driving over the crop with these big wide tires is not going to impact it at one bit. But as we move through the rest of our growth stages, driving through the crop will have an effect if we have wide tires. And that is where we're going to need to put in narrow tires, have a track with narrow tires, or equip our spreader with narrow tires so that we can, in theory, get in between the rows and not affect our crop. Now that we've applied some portion of our field with a second level of fertilization, if you come back here and check our growth, soil composition, we can see now we have single state of fertilization here, two states of fertilization here. So we walk into that second fertilization state. There we go, people. We are 100% fertilized and 100% yield bonus. We're going to get our most yield possible out of this field because we've done all the steps. And this is the day we've all been waiting for. The day we finally are able to harvest our field that we so painstakingly have worked through the process. And we're going to see what do we get with our efforts. Now, sadly, currently with Farm Sim 25, we don't know how big this field really is. We come here to our farmlands and we click on this farmland. It's 2.45 acres in size, but it includes an area that's not only the field, right? There's this area past the field down here to this road that is included in that 2.45 acres. So we really don't have a good representation. In fact, I don't think there's a single field on this map where the farmland matches up exactly one for one. Possibly, possibly farmland 41. Maybe that would have been a better farmland for our test. But alas, that is not the one we picked. We picked this one. But what I want to really demonstrate, not so much is how much do we get per acre or per hectare with 0% yield bonus to 100% yield bonus. Pretty obvious it's going to be double. But what I do want to do, and I will be able to demonstrate, is to take all of the crop we get off of this field and then compare it to what we would have gotten if we would have skipped certain steps. For example, if we had skipped mulching, well, we would have lost 
if we would have skipped soil rolling, we would have lost 2.5%. If we would have combined both of those and missed both of those, we'd have lost 5%. Right? If for whatever reason we forgot to lime, we would lose 15%. So that's the numbers that I want to be able to present to you. Let me finish harvesting this field, and I'll be right back. So harvest is over, and we have accumulated 10,829 liters worth of wheat off of our field that was a plus 100% harvest. So we can assume that we basically doubled our yield from what we would have had if we hadn't gone through any of those steps. We're back to where we started a year ago, where we have zero fertilized field. This field needs weeding, but we're not going to weed it's useless to weed this field until after we do all of the other work and plant a new crop. What we don't have, though, is we don't have the need plow state. We don't need to plow this field. As I mentioned, we don't need to plow after every harvest of wheat. We don't need to plow after every three harvests of wheat like we have to use to way, way back in Farm Sim 17 and 19. No need to plow this field ever. Unless we put in crops like corn, sugarcane, or root crops like potatoes, sugar beet, carrots, parsnips, and red beets. Plowing is done. We're going to get a permanent plus 15, if you will, on our harvest bonus going forward, simply because we don't have a need plow state. Now, what does this all come out to? Well, I ran a little bit of numbers. We come here to our prices screen. And we are on easy economy for this particular video. At 10,829 liters worth of product, if we sold it in December when we had the highest price listed here of $1,193, we would earn $12,918. Now, something that I did not do with respect to this field because I didn't really bother to worry too much about it is... I would always advocate to putting a straw swath down, collecting the straw, and selling the straw. You can often do pretty darn good with respect to selling your straw off of your wheat, barley, or oat fields. It might not double your income, but it will significantly boost over your overall income. Now, as I mentioned, mulching and rolling is a 2.5% bonus each. Should we chosen not to mulch or not to roll, our crop yield would have been reduced to just 10,558 liters as opposed to the 10,829. What does that equate out to money-wise? A loss of $323. So you need a way, ultimately, the cost of a roller was the cost of this roller worth losing $323 of course this is just one field if you have 10 fields and they're all the exact same size as what we just demonstrated then that would have been a loss of $3,223 if you do that enough times sure you'll pay for your roller but what about your time investment that's up to you. Some players must get 100% all the time, no matter what. Other players, like myself, I typically weigh it off and go, well, rolling doesn't give me that big of a bonus. I might just not worry with the cost or time. How about mulching? Well, as we mentioned, mulching also gives us 2.5% yield. So we would have lost $323 if we didn't mulch. We could get a cheap mulcher, like this 3-meter one, for $11,000. Or we could get this 12-meter mulcher for $78,000. This would definitely get the job done faster, but how many times would you have to mulch a field or fields in order to pay off that $78,000 investment? Quite a few. If we decided to not mulch or roll the field, we would have lost out on potentially $645. For me, not that big of a deal, given the investment in, one, the machinery, 
and two, the overall investment in the time. If we didn't lime the field, well, that's where it starts getting kind of expensive. We would have reduced our total income by $1,937 should we not put lime on the field. What about weeding? Well, weeding is big time costly. If you let weeds grow up in your field, like for example, this one over here. Or technically even the small weeds. We've got a collection here of medium and large and small weeds. Not weeding a field is going to potentially reduce your overall income by over $2,500 for this size field. So imagine instead of collecting $12,918, imagine only collecting, let's say, $10,400 or $10,300 and some dollars. That can add up pretty quick if you iterate through multiple game years. So again, to get 100% yield, we're going to need to do a few things. One, observe does the need... Does the field need plowing or not? If it does need plowing, then you should plow the field because you're going to get a plus 15%. If it doesn't need plowing, well, then it already has a plus 15% yield. If you come in here into game settings and you disable plowing, then you have already given yourself a plus 15%. Liming the field will give you plus 15%. If you come in here again to the game settings and turn liming off, you've just given yourself an automatic plus 15%. If you weed your field, then you give yourself a plus 20%. Again, we come in here into the settings and turn off weeds if we wanted. You kind of get the idea. If you don't fertilize the field, well, you're missing out on 45% yield bonus. Now, 45% is split between two different applications. And then lastly, to round it all up to 100% is mulching at two and a half and rolling at two and a half. You're going to roll after seeding or planting, and you're going to mulch before cultivating or plowing so you're going to mulch immediately following the previous season's harvest you're going to roll immediately following planting or seeding theoretically you should lime before you do your field work so in this case we should lime before we cultivate this field and you should harvest or you should fertilize after seeding and planting and then wait until a first growth stage happens and then apply your second fertilization state. And at that point, you're done, hands off, and just wait for the money to roll in after harvest. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope it helped explain to you how to get that 100% yield bonus or why maybe you're not getting that 100% yield bonus where maybe you may be missing out. And quite frankly, is it even worth trying to get to in the end anyway let me know your thoughts down below are you somebody that goes for 100 percent all the time every time or are you like me and you're like eh, mulching not that big of a deal rolling i can do without i'm fine with 95 percent yield bonus day in day out i'm pretty good with that until next time happy farming